Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. The webinar is about introducing the state-of-the-art search method in 3D slope stability and uh, it's called intelligent search. This is a new feature that we are going uh, to release um, a couple of hours. So we are excited. This is another innovation from Rock Science a slide team. And um, this webinar, uh, in this webinar, I will explain how it works. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Sina Jawan uh, I'm the product manager of a slide two and a slide three and I'm going to present in this uh, webinar. Please feel free to ask questions uh, anytime. If you have any questions, just type down in the question uh, section, and uh, we're gonna answer your questions uh, live, and at the end of the presentation, I will address a couple of questions as well. So, uh, about rock science, first of all, if you look at these images and a slide, this is a new look of uh, Rock Science. If you go to Rock Science's website, you can see that we launched a new website today. And I'm presenting the first uh, version of this new look today. Um, you know Rock Science, we are the world leader of developing innovative 2D and 3D software for civil mining and geotechnical applications. Over more than 25 years, uh, we have grown from four people to more than 80 people now. And we have over 10,000 customers around the world. We have 19 software packages, different applications. And a slide two and a slide three is part of uh, these programs. Uh, a very important aspect of rock science software is the integration between different products. And uh, you can see a lot of software packages, they are integrated with each other. 2D, 3D, limit equilibrium, finite element, different uh, types of integrations. And it's very important for uh, our users to know about these uh, integrations. So today, uh, I will talk about uh, two of these software packages, a slide two and a slide three. Uh, the focus is on a slide three, but I would like it to start from 2D. Uh, to build the story easier, uh, and then we will focus on the 3D uh, analysis. I hope uh, you enjoy the webinar and the new option that we have. So let's define the problem here. Uh, first of all, as you know, a slide two and a slide three, there are 2D and 3D limit equilibrium software. Uh, a slide two is method of slices, and a slide three is method of columns. As you can see in this uh, image here, you can see the column viewer in a slide three. Uh, but limit equilibrium is limit equilibrium. Spencer, GLE, Yambu, and Bishop uh, methods, they have been extensively discussed in literature and used by practitioners. We don't change the LEM uh, methodology. But the main challenge in the limit equilibrium analysis is to find the most critical steep surface and the lowest factor of safety corresponding to that critical steep surface. This challenge is addressed by tools uh, such as slide two and slide three, and that's why slide two and slide three are top two products in 2D and 3D limit equilibrium in the market, because we are famous because of our innovations and our advanced search methods that we have in these two software. Uh, let's dig a little bit uh, deeper into the problem. So if this is a factor of safety uh, function, factor of safety is a nonlinear function. And it has a global minimum, which everybody is looking for it. And it also has some local minimums. So the challenge is we look for this global minimum factor of safety. And to pick the best search method to find this uh, global minimum. That's what this uh, webinar is about. So let's start with 2D. Uh, since we are all familiar with the 2D analysis. Uh, in a slide two, we have two different types of failure surfaces circular and non-circular failure surfaces. Uh, circular, you're familiar with them. Uh, non-circular, we have a couple of methods, including cuckoo search, simulated annealing, particle swarm search methods. 
I will explain what they are uh, shortly. In addition to our uh, like global optimization methods, basically circular and non-circular methods, we have local optimizations as well. So we do recommend strongly to our users to use these local optimizations in addition to the uh, non-circular methods. So any non-circular method you use, we definitely ask you to use either Monte Carlo or surface altering optimization. So these are different options that we have. Let's look at these meta heuristic search methods, what they are. We have three of them in a the slide, two particle swarm optimization, cuckoo search, and simulated annealing. Meta heuristic methods, they have gained popularity in geotechnical engineering, including uh, slow stability analysis. Uh, they are optimization techniques that they can efficiently explore solution spaces and find near optimal solutions for complex problems. So their job is to be a global optimization technique and find the optimal values, which is factor of safety in our problem. So they are non-circular methods for global optimization. They require no user input of trial slip surfaces or search objects. And they are able to display the various failure modes found during the search, as you can see in this image. Uh, and they can inform the users of other possible failure modes uh, as well. So after global optimization, as I mentioned, we require local optimizations. We have two methods. One is a traditional Monte Carlo uh, optimization, which is based on Greco 1996. Uh, it doesn't guarantee any uh, to find the global minimum. It might get trapped in local minimum as well. Uh, it is used to optimize surfaces that they are already considered to be good surfaces. So we just find the global slip surface and just modify it a little bit. Uh, basically, we calculate factor of safety. We randomly modify locations of a vertex uh, of a vertex of a slip surface. Calculate factor of safety for the new surface. If the new factor of safety is lower than the previous one, we keep the new one. Otherwise, we keep the old one. That's the whole process. In uh, 2018, a slide to 2018, we uh, released one of these innovations of rock science, which is called surface altering optimization. It is a local optimization. It is a very powerful uh, tool to yield a lower factor of safety by modifying the geometry of the critical slip surface. It's a novel approach based on a derivative-free constraint nonlinear optimization, DOB by QA, developed by Powell in 2009. Since a lot of these methods that I'm talking about today, they are uh, rock sciences innovations. Uh, you can see I put the papers, journal papers that we published using these methods and explaining the algorithms uh, because they are unique to us uh, as well. So you can go to these publications and read the details. Uh, surface altering is based on a sequence of transformation applied to a geometry of input surface as a whole. So it's a very strong uh, local optimization uh, technique. So. Let's look at our first example. I want to show you what's the difference between the uh, surface altering optimization and Monte Carlo optimization. So I'm going to bring uh, our first example here. So to explain what this example is, basically we have a weak layer, a very thin weak layer uh, deep in your uh, soil profile. So the challenge of any method is to find the critical steep surfaces that they go through this weak layer. So for our master scenario, uh, let's look at the options that we have. Uh, we go to surface options and we use non-circular cuckoo search. And for optimization, we have Monte Carlo optimization checked. So for our master scenario, we are doing Monte Carlo optimization as our local optimization. So I'm gonna compute this uh, model. So first of all, cuckoo search is uh, done first, and then we do four thousands of Monte Carlo uh, optimization, which is going to take a few seconds. And you can see as you do, do local optimization, your factor of safety is going down. So about 25 seconds. So if we go to the results, I'm 
going to bring it to this window. So this is the factor of safety of 1.1, and the critical slip surface did not touch this weak layer. So even though we did the local optimization, we couldn't capture it. Now what I'll do, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to define a new scenario. I'm going to rename it as SAO, Surface Altering Optimization. And I go to Surface Options, change our settings to Surface Altering, hit OK, and run it again. This is a multi-scenario file. So since um, we are uh, running them again, so let's look at. So again, this is Monte Carlo optimization. I ran them uh, at the same time because I wanted to show you uh, the differences between the speed. So this one is done. And this is surface altering. So Cuckoo Search, the same process is done. And this is the surface altering. It's done way faster. And now let's look at the results. So this is Monte Carlo that we have already seen. And this is surface altering, which found the critical slip surface. So if we compare them one by one, both of them are low values, but surface altering optimization could capture this uh, weak layer. So that's the advantage of surface altering over the old Monte Carlo uh, optimization. So let's move on uh, to the presentation. For this model, I ran the finite element analysis as well. This is what we always recommend to do finite element in addition to limit equilibrium to make sure that your results are correct. And you can see that the red one is the critical slip surface coming from a slide. And this is the results of RS2 software. And factor of safety is 1.01. .01. So very close failure surfaces, very close values of factor of safety. So finite element confirmed the results. Let's move on to the 3D analysis, um, a slide tree software. Again, if you have any questions uh, during my presentation, please feel free to ask. In terms of a slip surface shapes, in 2D we mentioned circular and non-circular. In 3D we have different types of sh shapes. Uh, just keep in mind, search in 3D is way harder than 2D. And uh, you require, because a slide is a full 3D software, uh, you require more flexible uh, shapes and search. Uh, that's why we have different methods here. A spherical is equivalent to circular, ellipsoidal is equivalent to non-circular, and we have other methods as well. A spline is a new surface search method uh, we released uh, more than a year ago. It is in the category of non-circular as well, uh, and also multiplanar and wedge uh, failure surfaces as well. Let's look quickly at the spline um, search method that, uh, as I said, this is another innovation from the Rock Science slide team. So traditionally, and now it's still a lot of uh, programs, they are based on a spherical and ellipsoidal. Um, and we used to cut the ground surface with these uh, surface shapes. But there is a problem with them. First of all, they are not flexible. But they have to keep the shape as a sphere or ellipsoid. And that's why the resulting slip surfaces do not represent the true uh, critical slip surface. What we used to do, we used to change these ones to NERBs, which are curved surfaces based on splines and weighted control points, as you can see. And then we use NERBs to cut the uh, topography instead. But we introduce a new shape of a slip surface called a spline. Again, another uh, publication that we have regarding this. And splines are very flexible. They are based on these control points. And you can easily manipulate these control points and change the shape of a slip surface. So you don't start from ellipsoid or uh, a sphere. You directly from a spline, and your slip surface shape will be way more flexible. Now, after you pick the type of a slip surface similar to 2D that you have, you need to pick the search method. In a slide three, we use metaheuristics as well. Uh, we use particle swarm optimization and cuckoo search. 
Particle swarm is inspired by the collective behavior of swarms. It involves a population of particles that move through the solution space, adjusting their position based on their individual and collective experience. So they look at their movements and also the other particles as well to find the uh, optimal solution. And cuckoo search, uh, cuckoo search draws inspiration from the reproductive strategy of cuckoo bears. They are coming from nature. And it was introduced by Yang and Dev in 2009. In cuckoo search and particle swarm search, um, in particle swarm, we use uh, initial, uh, our initial surfaces, our initial particles. In cuckoo search, our initial surfaces are nests, different methods. Um, Normally, and these nests and particles, they indicate different paths that will be used to explore the search region. Normally, any different path is uh, good enough uh, for most of the models. As the model becomes larger, this number might be low, which I'll talk about it later. And we have iterate, different iterations because it's an optimization problem. We have different iterations as well. So. If you have more iterations, your results will be improved, but it's, the computation is going to be longer. The advantage of, of Cuckoo Search and PSO is that they are global optimization, and they uh, are better in terms of not, in get, not getting trapped in local minimums. They are better, not complete 100% uh, like not being trapped in local minimums. So, this is an interesting um, slide. You can see that these particles or nests uh, from particle swarm or cuckoo search, they start at different locations. So we throw them uh, randomly and um, they look for the global minimum factor of safety. If you look at the way that these particles move, you can see that the two different methods, they do it differently but they come with the same solution, very similar, 1.29 compared to 1.31. So totally different methods, but they, for the same problem, they come up with the same answer. The other thing that you need to notice here is that all these particles, they try to very fast to converge to a, the one single solution, which is very important in this optimization. We didn't stop here, so we move on and we found that uh, the first slide that I showed you, the factor of safety uh, graph, we said in traditional limit equilibrium, we always look for this global minimum. But it's hard because there are some points uh, that local minimums that the value of the factor of safety is very close to this one, but in a different, totally different location. That's why we came up with an algorithm called multimodal optimization or MMO. In this algorithm, instead of looking for the global minimum, we looked for local minimums. Obviously the global minimum is one of them, but the chance of getting trapped in local minima is very low because we find all of them. And instead of just showing one single slip surface, we can show three, four, as many as you want. So this is the multimodal optimization. So I'm going to show you another example. But before that, uh, I'm going to go back to my 2D example. I'm going to add a new scenario. I'm going to call it MMO, multimodal optimization. And in the search options, multimodal is based on particle swarm optimization. And in slide two, if you choose particle swarm, you can select multiple option as well. Hit OK. And let's compute this file. Since we computed these two, we don't need to compute them. We just compute multimodal optimization. Okay. It's very fast. I just want to show you uh, the results quickly. You can see that we run surface altering a few times because we are looking for uh, altering the minimums, the local minimums, uh, which is very important. So if we look at the results, for this scenario, we see two slip surfaces. One is the one that Monte Carlo found, 
one is the one that Cephas Altering found and MMO found both of them. So basically the one that Monte, Monte Carlo found was a local minimum. It got trapped in local minimum, but Cephas Altering didn't. So you can see with MMO, you can capture all these at the same time. So let's go to our first uh, 3D example. This is uh, an open pit mine. Uh, it's a complex open pit mine. You can uh, look at the uh, geology as well. This is gonna be um, the new tutorial in a slide three to make models and do our geometry creation uh, in the new version that we will uh, release soon. Uh, so in this example, I wanna show you what happens to multimodal uh, optimization in 3D. So um, if we go to the surfaces, surface options, I'm gonna use a spline search for this example and particle swarm search. As an initial part of the example, uh, I'm gonna turn off surface altering optimization. And this is the, I think the only red uh, warning that we have in a slide three that do not run any of these methods without surface altering. Even for our tech supports, if we receive models from our customers that they uncheck the surface altering optimization, we do not even look at them because this is a must in 3D. You should not turn it off. And interestingly, this is unique to a slide a tree. So um, I'm gonna run this model without, I, I will run a few of the 3D models because it might take some time. So I just run this one without surface altering. Um, I'm just gonna uh, use for the methods, I'm gonna use Yambu only, which is the fastest. Um, and I'm gonna compute it. To look at the results first, uh, then we will go further uh, into other ex part of the example. So a slide three, similar to a slide two, uh, first of all, we do process the input files and the geometry first, and then uh, we compute um, one of these global optimizations, uh, particle swarm optimization or cuckoo search, and then after that, we do the uh, surface altering optimization, which is a local optimization that we have. In a slide three, we only have surface altering optimization. We don't have Monte Carlo. And I think my 2D example was obvious uh, because of why we do only surface altering. Because in 3D efficiency is important as well. Uh, surface altering is not only more accurate, it is faster as well. So we have 40 iterations of a particle swarm optimization. And a software goes through all these iterations and find the global uh, factor of safety. So it will be done uh, soon. Then we can look at the results of uh, this analysis. So if we look at the critical slip surface in this model, uh, factor of safety with the AMBU is 2.929. Uh, and this is our critical slip surface. And you can look at the shape. It is very flexible with the spline shapes. It is not limited to ellipso ellipsoid or spheres. And factor of safety is 2.929. Now, what I'll do, uh, I've done it before uh, to save some time. I ran this model with uh, surface altering optimization. So the only difference between this one and the one that I computed is this option is checked. Surface altering optimization is checked. If you look at the results, factor of safety went down to 2.69 from 2.92, way lower. Uh, more than 10% uh, lower than uh, the one without surface altering. So I'll comment on this later regarding the high values of uh, 3D analysis. Then what I did, I went to another model and I turned on the multiple option with particle swarm. This is a multimodal optimization. So for this model, I got another factor of safety 2.37. 
So even lower than the one that I found before. So just compare 2.9 without surface altering. With surface altering, it went to 2.69, and with multimodal, it, it went down to 2.37. I need to comment on this. It's not always the case. This is a specific example, multimodal, found under the global minimum and the other methods they couldn't find it and it's because of the graph that i showed you multimodal optimization finds all the local minimums and among them it picks the global minimum which is more efficient so in this example you saw how these uh, innovations of rock science can lead to way lower factor of safety let's go to our uh, example uh, our presentation so open pit mine um, we look at this example now let's talk about surface altering in 3d a little bit because uh, i want to show you a couple of things here this is another way of showing like particle swarm this is for uh, it's a heat map all these particles they try to go to the lowest temperature so uh, which is what we do find lowest factor of safety there are limitations with these metaheuristic approaches. First of all, it used to be only simple shapes, spheres and ellipsoids, uh, which, as I mentioned, they were not flexible. Also, because uh, of these limitations of these metaheuristic methods, the search is coarse over a vast search space. So it doesn't matter if, uh, like for big, very big models, you throw uh, limited particles because uh, the computation time is very important. And that's why, because of these two reasons, if you don't do local optimizations, you will end up with very overestimated factor of safety, high values of factor of safety. So how do we do surface altering in 3D? As I mentioned, we used to uh, transfer ellipsoid and spheres to nerves, which are splines with control points. So basically, we have these nets. Then we start playing with them. Uh, there are a lot of uh, steps uh, that you can find them in the uh, publication that I just showed. Um, you can modify the frame elevation, bubble gum stretching, and shift and scale uh, this net. So we start playing with this net to find the lowest factor of safety. After introducing a, a spline, the life got even easier for us because uh, a splines, they don't need to be transferred to anything. And we just start playing uh, with these control uh, points of the spline surface and do uh, whatever I just showed you, different steps to find the lower factor of uh, safety. Um, let's go to another example. So for this example, uh, this is a tailing uh, example. Let me show you the 2D model. We go from 2D to 3D, uh, but I'll just quickly show you the 2D results because uh, there is something here that I wanted to show you guys. So in this tailing model, there is a weak layer. The red layer is a weak layer. So if we use, let's say we use a Spencer method, and let me put them side by side. So the right side is the slip surface, critical slip surface for the case that there is no optimization, no surface altering or Monte Carlo optimization. The left one is with optimization. You can see that the slip surfaces are very similar and basically the global optimization was good enough to find the critical slip surface, which is 0.9 uh, in 2D. I brought this model into the 3D uh, to slide three and this is my model. Here is other thing regarding the 3D modeling. So basically, I just extruded this model, which doesn't have any point. Uh, it's the same model. But in 3D, you can play with this weak layer because 2D assumes that this weak layer has the length of infinite uh, over um, like normal to your model. But the 3D model, we can make it narrower. We can make it more challenging for the uh, search method to find the critical slip surface. That's why I added two planes 
in my model to cut my geometry and then make the weak layer narrower. So to cut the geometry, we have a tool called divide all geometry. I hit OK, it's gonna cut my volume. So um, zoom in. This is the weak layer that I'm interested in, not the rest. So what I'll do, I assign a different property to the weak layer in other locations. I'm gonna move this one. So this is the weak layer on the other side. I'm gonna assign it as alluvium. And also I'm gonna move this slider to the other region as well. And this one alluvium as well. So now I, I have, let me reduce the transparency. The red region is only here. We have a tool that we can combine and union all the material with the same property, which is called collapse material boundaries. Go ahead, click on it. So now my weak layer is only this region. Um, this is a 2D view, it's still the same view, but my 3D view is uh, like this. So. For computing this model, again, I don't want to do a surface altering optimization. I'm gonna uh, do ellipsoid and cuckoo search uh, together and run the model. And then we will look at the results uh, with uh, surface altering as well. So this one is Yambu and Spencer, uh, similar to the 2D model that I had. So the software is gonna compute. Again, Cuckoo search similar to particle storm that I showed previously had, uh, has 40 iterations. Uh, the settings are different. Uh, obviously there are two different methods, but uh, iterations, uh, they are the same. So this will be done. You can see Yambu is faster uh, than Spencer. So, we will look at the results. Factor of safety is 1.2. And look at the slip surface. If you don't do any local optimization, you have to stick to ellipsoid, uh, ellipsoidal slip surfaces. And from 0.9 in 2D, we jumped up to 1.2, uh, about 30% higher. Um, and maybe that's why, where these comments are, differences between 2D and 3D, 30%, 40%, 50% higher uh, in 3D is coming from. Uh, but let's run uh, the uh, model with surface altering optimization as well. So if I go to the other model, this one is, the only difference is I turned on surface altering optimization. Just look at the critical slip surface. First of all, it gets, tries to get the shape of the weak layer. It's not ellipsoid anymore. It narrows down uh, to be as narrow as the uh, weak material that we have here. And look at this look here in, two, in one model. And this one is shallower, the ellipsoid one. Look at the factor of safety, 1.03 compared to 1.2 and compared to 0.9 something in 2D. So basically it is within the range of 10 to 15%, which is a typical range for the differences between 2D and 3D model, even for complex models. There are cases that 3D might be larger, uh, way larger than 2D, but typical values are within this range, not for an extruded model, it can't go 30%. So this example shows uh, how this surface altering optimization uh, works. Uh, very well. So intelligent search, another innovation from a slide uh, team at Rock Science. And this is gonna be a revolution in terms of the 3D search uh, in limit equilibrium analysis. We have been working on it for a while and uh, the results are uh, very good. And I'll show you a couple of examples. And uh, it's gonna be released very soon, uh, today or tomorrow, and uh, please try it and for your complex models specifically. So there are two issues with uh, metaheuristic methods in general. As you can see, we throw initial particles and they tend to converge to a single solution. 
but sometimes this is there are two issues comes here one is the coverage of the edges uh, might not be enough and the second one is these metallurgy methods they tend to converge very fast sometimes as you saw in a couple of examples that i showed they miss the local uh, the global minimums and they get trapped so they require for big models specifically you need to do a manual process define uh, boxes or increase your uh, particles for example uh, it is not impossible but you need to work more on your model so that's why we came up with a solution and we call it intelligent search these are the steps so i'll go one by one to explain how this process works first of all we don't throw particles randomly we analyze our model first and for example we find the potential critical regions uh, the red ones here first then intelligently we generate preliminary solutions or throw particles so you can see in the red regions we throw more particles we have more initial slip surfaces after defining enough uh, particles depends on the size of your model so it's size based as well we define we calculate our initial factor of safety and we define and identify the regions of interest so we show you without even computing even you can see that these are the regions of interest and critical potential critical regions and then for the regions of interest we provide focused searches. So we do search in those regions. So let's be more specific. So here, intelligent search generates many preliminary surfaces to ensure better coverage. So it is not a constant number, depends on the size of the model, depends on the method. I'll show you how it works uses a new custom surface generation so surface generation is gonna be based on the user's input and the options that you pick so it's custom it's not random anymore and allows users to quickly generate a safety map to identify five regions of interest so now we have a user interface feature in slide three that you can look at the safety map before even computing your full model to look at your model and get some ideas about your model and then intelligent search uses multiple search clusters to explore regions of interest truly so we cluster different regions and focus on those regions we're not going to miss any failure in this search but in, if your model is big and this search method works very well for huge models actually and that's its job so if you increase the number of clusters we focus even more and we have we're gonna uh, have a better results um, and then this is the ai part um, each cluster is an independent particle swarm which is we use a swarm intelligent op option uh, which is a well-established branch of uh, ai artificial intelligence because it involves the development of algorithms that mimic the collective decentralized and self-organizing behavior observed in natural swarm to solve complex optimization problems so for each cluster we do this swarm optimization to find a better sleep surface. For the first time in the slide software, we have a search refinement. Basically, you can pick moderate, coarse, fine, or user-defined type of search if you want. And uh, based on these justifications, we change some of the inputs of the software uh, even the coarse one is a good approach it gives a very high percentage in terms of finding the uh, local minimum so this is an example of comparison between a local uh, a coarse intelligence search and 
uh, fine intelligence search that you can see. Basically, they captured the same uh, slip surfaces. The fine method finds one more uh, critical uh, slip surface, which is lower than the other ones. Uh, depends, again, the size of your model. You can pick one of these methods. So let's look at uh, the new look of a slide tree, these different methods that we have, uh, different options for intelligent search uh, that we have. So let's uh, start from here. This is a land slide model. It's a big land, land slide model. I picked two uh, big models. Uh, different layering. Um, so the surface options, I, use, I showed you the classic search, which is the options that we had in our previous versions. Now we have a new uh, option here called intelligent search. So, the intelligence search, uh, first of all, this is a weak layer handling, which both options they have. Then we have search refinement, which is going to be moderate, fine, coarse, and user defined. I'll show you the options. And surface altering optimization. So let's look at different options, and I'll show you how these change. First of all, some of these options, they are grayed out because they are specific to different uh, methods. So if I go to find the minimum preliminary surfaces would be 4,000, 20 iterations of surface altering. If I go to course, this one will go to, uh, down to 10, and this one will go down to three. This is the minimum surfaces. The maximum is based on the size of your model. So we specify that once you start computing. And also we have user defined. So in user defined, you can show as many as you want a uh, factor of safety. You can define as, cl as many clusters as you find you want. You can define the initial preliminary surfaces and you can define the maximum iterations for surface altering uh, optimization. So this is the menu. Um, I'm gonna just change it to moderate and hit okay. Then, I won't compute because I want to show you the new feature that we have. This is called regions of interest. And basically, you can have different settings for the regions of interest. Again, moderate, course fine, and user defined. And you can analyze. Basically, we throw the initial particles in the model, define initial surfaces in the model, and uh, look at the safety map. So let's do that. Uh, you can either do it by clicking on Analyze there, or you can uh, click here, Generate Regions of Interest, which uses the default, which is the moderate option. So we click on it. You can see that the dialog will come up. It is not a, uh, it's similar to the compute dialog, but uh, once the, it starts, you can see there is no factor of safety here. It just generates 10,000 preliminary surfaces because the model was big. The default, uh, like the minimum is 3,000, but since the model size was big, it uh, did the 10,000. And it's done less than a minute. Uh, you can look at the preliminary uh, safety map, which we call it uh, regions of interest. It's called Region of Interest Safety Map, Yambu method. And you can see that it shows the red regions, yellow regions, goes from critical to the safe. So that's how we do it. We haven't computed anything yet. I computed this model in advance uh, with the spline method, particle swarm optimization, surface altering optimization. And I had a factor of safety of 1.2. So if I look at the safety map for this model, the original model, you can look at the safety map. And this is the initial safety map that we generated. If I put them side by side, so basically this is coming from uh, intelligence search, initial uh, surfaces, and this is from the final surfaces using s -plant. This is not bad. You can look at the region. They found the same critical regions, but because of the co uh, coverage of the intelligence search, it found some additional regions that might be regions of interest as well. So 
this is how uh, the intelligence search starts searching uh, for the critical strip service. I ran this model in advance and uh, we define option. So I'm gonna open this one. So for this option, I'll put it side by side uh, with the uh, spline and particle swarm. So let's look at a couple of things here. If you look at the factor of safety for a Spencer method, let's change the other one to a Spencer method as well, because a Spencer is our goal of factor of safety. And I'm gonna turn it off. So for the factor of safety, the intelligence search gives a factor of safety of 1.27, same location which both of them uh, they focused on uh, and the particle swarm spline also find the same factor of safety similar for 1.29 same location but intelligence search found uh, two more uh, slip surfaces so that's the first difference the second one if you look at the final safety map of the intelligence search and we look at the final uh, safety map for the spline and pso now we can see those two regions we identified using the intelligence search they are like they have larger factor of safety but they are close to this number that this one it couldn't find it so that's the beauty of the intelligence search, how it can cover the entire model and how it finds even a lower factor of safety for the same region that we found. So uh, that's how the intelligence uh, search works. I'll go to uh, another example to show you a couple of more things. But before that, Recently, we released a new version of RS3 software uh, with a new option called uh, Hybrid Mesh, which make it very fast to run the slope stability analysis. We ran it for the same problem, and as I mentioned before, for 2D, to confirm your results, you need to run it with the finite element analysis. So you can see that these two, the lines that you can see here, these are coming from slide two results, intelligent search results. And finite element found these ones, let me zoom in. You can see it shows that here is critical and this is the global factor of safety. So you can see that finite element captures both regions similar to intelligence search and find the factor of safety about 1.3, which is very close to the ones that we found in uh, slide three using a spline or uh, using the intelligence search. So that's how we confirm the results and how we confirm the critical uh, regions. Okay, let's go to our next model. This is a big open pit uh, model. Uh, I'm gonna bring it up uh, to show you uh, the initial file. So this is the uh, pit model. And um, I did the initial uh, region of interest uh, creation. Basically, you can see that um, I use a Spencer and Yambu. So uh, any method that you choose, you can uh, do the initial surface generation and look at different regions. So basically, we have two very critical regions. One is on this side and one is here. So two regions of interest, uh, critical regions of interest. Then. Uh, I ran this model with ellipsoid and cuckoo search and surface altering optimization. With the Spencer, it finds a factor of safety of 1.05 at this region. This is one of the critical regions that intelligent search showed. If you look at the safety map, um, you can see that it kind of shows those two regions. So, um, but for intelligence search, it is a little bit uh, more clear. That's one of the ways that um, we intended to have this user interface feature to show these regions of interest initially. How do you use them? 
let me show you in other uh, same model but other version i use these regions of interest that intelligence search showed to put boxes there search boxes there so if you want to focus on a specific regions you can use the uh, intelligence search uh, initial surface generation option and focus on a specific region and you can see that for this region that we focus factor of safety went down to if you compare the uh, this one from 1.05 to a Spencer 1.03 <clears throat> and also it found something on the other region 1.024 so if you focus your search using this initial uh, surface generation you will get some other uh, like factor of safety but you don't have to do that uh, if you want to run just intelligent search you can easily run it and it gives you, first of all, I, I'll show you the settings that I use for this um, example. You can see as many as the slip surfaces as you want um, and for different methods. <coughs> so let me show you. Um, results are loading. So this is my, um, final uh, model using intelligent search i use the user defined option so let me show you what i used first user defined i started with initial of 4000 uh, it was a big model it went up to 10000 i had 10 clusters i increased the number of clusters i asked the software to show me five minimum slip surfaces and i had like 20 iterations for the uh, surface altering optimization as well so these are the settings that i use with the spencer and uh, yambu so if we focus on a spencer um, you can see that first of all it captures whatever cuckoo search captured uh, with boxes 1.033 lower than the one without the box it also captured one here 1.005 uh, similar to the one that you put the box there and it captured others as well these are all low values 1.16 1.06 1.17 so you can see how truly it searches the entire mother that you won't miss anything anymore so everything is gonna be uh, there every slip surface is gonna be there and uh, that's how the intelligence search works this I, again this is a big model um, more than like five kilometers by five kilometers and um, intelligence search could generate the initial slip surfaces and then look at uh, focus on a specific location to find the lowest uh, factor of safety so with that um, i will finish my presentation thanks for attending this webinar please let us know if you have any questions and please try these uh, new methods uh, we're going to release the software very soon um, by tomorrow and um, I hope you enjoyed this. Please let us know if you have any comments. Please email us and we would appreciate your feedbacks. Thank you and have a great day.